All right, everyone, let's dive into this uh, this whole world of state privacy laws. State privacy laws, yes. It's 2024. It is. Still no federal privacy law here in the U.S. You, yeah. So we've got this, you know... Patchwork. Yeah, this patchwork of state regulations. A lot of them. Yeah, and that's what we're diving into today, right? Absolutely, now. yeah. Trying to make sense of it all. Trying to help. Whether you are prepping for, like, you know, that big meeting. Yes. Or you're just ridiculously curious about this stuff, mm -hmm. like me. And the interesting thing is, you know, each state has its own unique approach, but there are some core principles that tie them all together. Okay. Like learning a new language, once you grasp the grammar, you can kind of understand any sentence, right? I like that. I like that analogy. So we're going for the, like, the big picture view here exactly. instead of getting lost in the weeds of each individual state. We want you to come away with a framework okay. for understanding any state privacy law you might run across. I love it. Okay, so let's get into some specifics. Let's do it. What are some states that, that stand out? Stand out? Well, Connecticut is a good place to start. Okay. They passed their law back in 2023, so they were kind of early adopters. Early adopters, all right. And their law has been pretty influential. Um, a lot of other states have used it as a model. So Connecticut, the trendsetter. Yeah, you could say that. What's What makes them unique? What are they doing? One thing that stands out is their definition of sensitive data. Okay. It's pretty broad. Includes things like racial or ethnic origin, religious beliefs, uh, biometric data, geolocation data. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That's pretty personal stuff. Yeah, that's way different than like my, you know. Your favorite coffee. Yeah, exactly. Right, and that's a key takeaway from a lot of these state laws. Okay. Not all data is created equal, right? Right. Some of it deserves a higher level of protection. For sure, for sure. Okay, so we've got Connecticut setting a high bar for sensitive data. Mm -hmm. What about some other... Um... How about Florida? Florida. Okay, yeah, let's talk Florida. All right, so their approach is interesting because they're really targeting big tech with this one. Okay. They have a $1 billion revenue threshold written right into the law. $1 billion? $1 billion. Wow. Okay, so if you're... Only the giants have to worry about this. Well, that's how some people see it, yeah. Okay. It's definitely a signal that they're um, particularly concerned about the practices of those big players. So they're saying, hey, you've got the resources. You better be leading the charge. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I like it. I like it. All right. What else we got? Let's go to Texas. It's Texas. So Texas, they decided not to have a revenue threshold. Okay. At all. All right. So their law, in theory, applies to a much broader range of businesses. Okay. So everyone better be paying attention in Texas. Everyone needs to be paying attention. Yeah. Because they're serious. Okay. They established a dedicated task force to enforce the law. Wow, a task force, Texas means business. They do. A task force, wow, so they're serious, okay. So we've got Connecticut setting a high bar for sensitive data, Florida zeroing in on those big tech companies, and Texas taking this broad approach. They're serious about enforcing this. They're not messing around. They are not messing around. Yeah, so it's interesting how each state is kind of, you know, coming at this their own way. It is, yeah. But you know what's interesting is that amidst all these different approaches, there is a common thread. Okay. And that is empowering consumers. Okay. Most of these state laws give individuals a whole new set of rights when it comes to their data. Okay, now we're talking, so what does that actually look like, like for me, for the average person? Okay, so imagine this, you're curious about what data a company has collected on you, right? Yeah. In the past, that might've been a total mystery. But with these new laws, you often have the right to access that information directly. Really? That's the right to access. Huh. No more mystery data. Right. I like it. Yeah. But what if I see something in there? What if I'm like, I don't want you to have that, you know? Exactly. So a lot of these laws also include a right to deletion. Okay. So you can actually request for your data to be deleted. Huh. So I can hit the delete button? It's not always guaranteed. There are exceptions. You know, it depends. Sure, sure. But it gives you more control. Okay, so I'm not just... Like, you know, my data's out there floating around. Who knows where it is? At least I have a little bit more of a say. Yeah, and it's not just about accessing and deleting, right? Think about those targeted ads that follow you around the internet. Ugh, don't even get me started, yeah. It's like, how do they know that, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Or the sale of your data to third parties yeah. that you've never even heard of. Right, right. That's where the right to opt out comes in. Okay. So this gives you the ability to say no to the use of your data for things like targeted advertising. 
Okay, so no more creepy ads following me around. In theory. In theory, I like it. I like it. So, you know, those are some of the consumer rights. But let's flip the script for a second. Okay. Businesses have some work to do. Yeah, I bet. I bet. All right. Business owners, marketers, data gurus, everyone listen up because we're going to tell you what you need to do. Yeah, this is important. To navigate this new world of data privacy. So one of the big things is data minimization. Okay. And that doesn't just mean collecting less data. Okay. It's about being more intentional with the data you collect. So being choosy, only keep the good stuff. The good stuff, yeah. Right. And being able to justify what you have. Okay, so how does a company actually do that? Asking tough questions. Like what? Do we really need someone's birthday to sign up for this email newsletter? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good point. Or, you know, why are we holding on to all this customer data right. that That's... we're not really using? Yeah. By being more intentional, you reduce risk. Okay, so it's about quality over quantity when it comes to data. Exactly. Okay, so what else What else are businesses going to have to do? They're going to have to be way more transparent. Okay. Remember those consumer rights we talked about? Yeah. Your privacy notices need to be clear about those. Okay, so none of that, like, you know, small print, legalese stuff? Yeah, none of that. Okay. It has to be readable, understandable. Okay, so it's simple language, explaining exactly what you're doing with the data, how you're using it, what my rights are. You got it. Okay. All right. I'm liking this. I'm liking this. And of course, we can't forget data security. Right, right. Because what's the point of all of this if it's not even secure? Exactly. Right. It's like locking your front door but leaving all the windows open. Exactly. Right. So you got to have strong safeguards. Got to stay ahead of those threats. You got it. It's about building trust. Okay. So we've covered a lot of ground here, but I want to go a little deeper. I want to get into the weeds. All right. Let's do it. Give me some, you know, give me the juicy detail. Okay. So let's go to Maine. Maine. Okay, the Pine Tree State, I like it. Maine has a reputation for having one of the strongest privacy laws in the country. And they have this unique provision called a private right of action. Okay, what is that? It gives individuals in Maine the power to sue a company directly if they feel their rights have been violated. Wow. They don't have to wait for the attorney general to take action. They can do it themselves. So businesses in Maine, they know that if they don't like get their act together. They could sued, yeah. Yeah, they could be facing a lawsuit, huh? Okay, what else? What else you got? Let's go to Montana. Montana, okay. Not really known for like data privacy activism. Right, right. But their law have a low threshold for applicability. Okay, so what does that mean, low threshold? It means it applies to a lot more businesses. Yeah. Even if they only handle the data of a small number of people. So they're saying data privacy is important no matter what, whether you're a small business or a huge corporation. Exactly. I like that. Yeah. Okay, what else we got? Let's go to Oregon. Oregon, all right, the beaver state. They're all about transparency in Oregon. Okay. You know how frustrating it is when you don't know who your data is being shared with? Oh, tell me about it. It's like this big mystery. Right. Well, Oregon wants to fix that. Okay. They're requiring businesses to say exactly which third parties they're sharing data with. No more hiding behind those vague terms mm -hmm. like trusted partners. Yeah, business partners. Right, right. Yeah, I like it. Transparency for the win. All right. So... Oregon is pulling back the curtain. Exactly. Giving us all a little peek behind the scenes. It's about giving you control. Okay, so we're seeing all these different laws pop up all over the place. Mm -hmm. It's like a it's like a domino effect. It is. One state does something, then another state's like, wait a minute, we need to do something too. Yeah. But what does this mean for a federal privacy law? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It is will we ever get one? Some people think that this actually might be pushing us closer. Really? Because Businesses are getting tired of dealing with all these different laws. Yeah, I bet. I bet that would be a lot. 50 different sets of rules. It would definitely simplify things for them. Right. One rule book to follow. Yeah, yeah. But then again, I bet some companies are loving this. Oh, sure, yeah. Because they can kind of just like, you know, play the game. Play the states against each other. Yeah, exactly. It's like they're delaying the inevitable. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's like a, like a get-out-of-jail-free card for a little while longer. Right. So... What do you think? Are we going to get a federal law anytime soon? Uh, that's a tough one to answer. It's like predicting the future. Exactly. But um, crystal ball is a little foggy. The crystal ball is definitely foggy on that one. But I can say that this conversation around data privacy isn't going away. OK. These state laws are sending a clear message. Yeah. Consumers want more control. They're demanding better. They are.
eh, not like it, I'm here for it. As you should be. Yeah. Um. So whether this leads to a federal law or just stronger state laws, who knows? But change is definitely happening. I love it. Okay, so, wow, this has been quite the deep dive. It has. We've covered a lot. We did. You know, from the big picture all the way down to the, you know, the fine print in these state laws. We got into the weeds a bit. We got into the weeds. I'm feeling empowered, though. I don't know about you. Good, good. I'm ready to take on the data world. That's the goal. That is the goal. Excellent. So I guess the big question is, if these state laws are all the ingredients, what's the recipe going to be for that federal privacy law? That is the question. That is the question. All right, everyone. That is all the time we have for today. But keep thinking about that question. Keep learning. Keep learning. Stay curious out there. And we will see you next time.